So we are the third grade team from Rockland Woods. I'm Sarah Browning. I'm Pam Deckert. Sharon Lewis. And Nicole Tarkanik. And we are going to show you how we used slides for directions and for some assignments during distance learning. And if you have questions as we go, just put them in the chat and we'll be watching that and we can answer those as we go. So in this session, you'll see some examples of the daily slides that we used, um, examples of pre-recorded lessons, and then just the reasoning behind these um, routines. And then there's also some short tutorials for how we created each of the things that we are discussing. So just a quick overview, we created daily slides to guide the student learning. Um, the slides included videos with our lessons, with directions, um, and written out directions. And then we kept all of the slides on a class website. So each day the students knew to go to Monday, Tuesday, whatever day it was. And then we just kept all of the past weeks on one page just so if students were working behind, they could go back and see the past learning. So each day we just had a different Google slide presentation for them. And then we chose to do this because this was something that we use in the classroom just to organize our learning and it helps us and the students just to know where we are and what the directions, what's expected during each chunk of our day. So it was a natural transition over. Okay, this is an example of what our daily slides were. We use Google Slides. And um, Sarah, if you could click on the April 13th. Yep. In our Google Slides, we just had, um, it looked the same pretty much every single day. We started with a, a good morning, some type of writing piece or um, what kind of day it was, some special celebration that we were having. And on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a morning check in. When she clicks the bird, you don't have to click the bird though, Sarah. There's a check-in page that they go to just to tell us how they're feeling, why they're feeling that way, maybe answer a couple of questions just to check in for the morning time. And then the next slide here, this is what the students will see, was their to-do list. We would have a video of what their items to do so they could see what their, what their job was that day. So on this particular day, we had the science at oil spill task, and they had their um, reading assignment, their Google form and freckle work, and then they had their math. Oh, we have a chat room, Tam. Yes, um, here it is. Did you send it all out at once or did you send each slide each day? And she said that she teaches middle school. Um, I think we each kind of did it a little different for what worked for our class. If the slides were ready, I went ahead and linked them to the website all like over the weekend. But if not, I did it day by day. It just depended what I had ready. But we did not release everything um, on Mondays because our kids were working like on Friday stuff, but they weren't following the progression. So it wasn't really making sense for how they completed their work. And I uploaded everything just the night before. So I knew that kids had done pretty much what they needed for that day before they were digging into the next day. I did the same thing the night before. And even so I would if do it, I would do it in the morning, right before like at about 730. I just scheduled to have everything loaded at that time. And even if I had the slides published, the assignments in Google Classroom didn't open until the day they needed them. Okay. So the next slide, the next two slides, we basically focused on our learning goals and then we broke it down like we would in the classroom so the kids would understand what we were actually doing using kid-friendly words. And then it started with our, Sarah, <laughs> um, with our science activity that day. We had a video from YouTube and then they just had picture clues and things like that that they would watch in order to help them with what their assignment was going to be. And then the next slide will show you that we're telling them to go to Google Classroom because sometimes if you post it on Google Classroom, you wanted to make sure they remember that that's where the assignment was going to be placed. We loaded um, pre record. Oh, there's Sarah Sorry. talking. That's all right. We loaded some pre recording videos of our vocabulary just to break down the vocabulary words that they needed to know and 
what they might see in the assignment. And then their reading task, we uploaded videos of us breaking down what our expectations were, how to mark up this text per se here. And we also uploaded a bookmark so they could remember what we used in the classroom to make it, you know, more like what was going on in our classroom. Okay, we have a question. How did you make the videos, screencast or iPad recording? And she says, sorry for all the questions, no problem. <laughs> and we'll actually get to that one later in the slides. So if we don't answer that directly, we'll catch up with that okay, one at the end. Come back to it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. So just to continue with our slides, we just told them exactly where to go, what they were going to be doing, just to make it easier for parents and students. <clears throat> um, Sarah had a class Zoom this day, so would tell them what time it was. It just keeps this basically slideshow, just kept them organized with what the assignments were. We were able to do our videos. We were able to show our screencasts, anything that we were gonna do. We don't have to go through the whole thing. There are three other examples that you could do if you wanna go through more. And on the website that I linked, you can see all of the slides from, if you wanna look even more in depth at them. So to add the videos, um, we just embedded them right into the Google Slides. So just on the toolbar, when you click on insert, you can add a video. So we would upload them to Google Drive and then add them into our slides. And the types of videos we did were like greetings, checking in with them, um, their to-do list. We did the learning goal and vocabulary, our mini lessons, um, directions, and we did screen record for that. And then some Zoom invites. So if we were having a special Zoom, telling them what that was before they came in just to get them excited about it. And then, oh, this is you, Nicole, sorry. That's all right. So we used different types of ways to record videos, um, but, I did a lot of mine through the screen recording on the iPad because it made it easier for the kids to see through their view. So I just added my own child as a student in my Google Classroom so I could access everything that way. And we would kind of just talk through the slides. We would take screenshots of criteria and do a video explaining the criteria. And a great tool for our kids was to split their screen with maybe a Google form and notes or with a text and a Google form. So we use slides a lot, notes, there was, um, and it's through the Braining Academy Manipulative of the Week. We used a lot of that for math because we could manipulate it and show it and do a mini lesson because we had tried, or at least I had tried, like the setting my phone up as a document camera and trying to manipulate, but doing it on the iPad was so much easier because that's exactly what the kids would see. Um, and then uploading in larger videos, we actually put into iMovie, which made it a lot easier to add to your Google Drive. It saved it as a smaller file. So each of us kind of did, I know some of you just right. classify for many of their videos. So it just depended on personal preference. Our question is, do you post the slide presentation in Google Classroom? Uh, you can. We posted it. We had a class website where we posted them just because we are worried about students going in and out of the slides and their assignments. So that way they could have two tabs open and have their daily slides open on Chrome or Safari just from the class website and have Google Classroom so they could switch between the apps just a little bit easier. But you could also post them in Google Classroom. I did often put them in classroom because I had kids I knew for a fact were not going to the website. So I wanted to put it in multiple places just to make sure they were accessing it. So then we also use Google Slides to make some assignments. So I'll show you a couple examples. Um, and there's a tutorial for how to make these later in the slides. But we found that this was helpful because it was easy for us to give feedback. We could just add comments right to the slides. We would drag our Bitmoji as a sticker. So just like at school, we would give them a sticker on their papers. They could see that slide was good. So this is an example of one that we used for essay planning. So they had the directions. It was broken down what was expected for each 
paragraph and then this was their planning. So they had multiple texts to read and then we put in to stop so that they knew come back the next day so that we only sent them this one assignment for the week plus their essay doc, but it was easier than sending something different every single day and all of their planning was in one place and it was just organized for them. And all they do is open it and they can just type right in it in their Google Slides app. So we just found that was helpful. We used it for essay planning. Um, we used it for some read alouds because we had a lot of students who were getting on all throughout the day, not just at our specific Zoom time. So doing a class read aloud was challenging. So we added a YouTube video of read alouds and I formatted it to start and stop at a certain time. So the kids had a chunk of the text that they listened to and then just like we would ask questions and discuss at school, they could type their answer there as they were reading. So we just found that this was helpful. Um, it was easy for the kids to reopen and make changes if they needed to. And it was just easy for us to add feedback and for them to access it. Where like with Google Forms, often even if we gave feedback, they didn't know how to go back in. And it was more challenging to go back in to see whatever our feedback was. And then we each just have some celebrations from our distance learning. I found that students had the videos to rewatch and help as needed. So the parents were very appreciative that they could watch these at any time and then they could rewatch them on their own. So when they got stuck on a problem or a question, they could go back to the video for help, even if the parent wasn't sitting right there next to them to help them right at that time. And I found that the pre-recorded videos were especially helpful for, especially for working parents who had to often support their child outside of the quote normal school day. So they liked that they were detailed and they also liked that we set the expectations for each of the assignments. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Sharon. I know. Okay. I found that a lot of my parents were very pleased with the pre-recording videos just to help them understand exactly what we were asking them to do because a lot of our parents this day and age, they don't understand what we are supposed to be doing. So modeling that assignment and it was easily understood what we were asking. And I had kids turning in and accessing the work between 7 a.m. and like 10 p.m. So students were able to go at their own pace and they kind of got into their own schedules at home. And I know the feedback from parents is that they had just appreciated the structure because they knew what it was going to look like every day. They knew they were going to start with their check-in, then go through their reading and their math. And then they knew very easily, the first couple of weeks were rough, knew after they got used to it where to go, how to access it, and how to check everything. So this was very helpful for parents as much as it was for the kids. Okay, so this is my, actually my second year as a third grade teacher using Common Core standards. So since I had navigated through the curriculum one year, I set a new goal for myself at the beginning of this year. And that new goal was to use slides <laughs> as a way to keep myself organized and to keep my learning on track. Um, little did I know that I would be working through a global pandemic where slides would be the actual <laughs> like cornerstone of instruction. So this is a slide that I'm going to probably revisit multiple times. There are links on here for quick tutorials for making daily slides, screen recording on the iPad, making Google slide assignments, and adding videos to slides. So I really like, this is my favorite slide, Sarah, out of the whole presentation. <laughs> so hopefully you will find it as helpful as I do. I'm gonna stop you there for a second, Pam. We have a chat mm -hmm. question. Sure. Did each of you create your own individual videos or did someone complete all of the math and content? I'll speak to that first. I did some of my own videos, but when it came down to using, um, Sarah, what did you use, the iPad? Yeah, I screen recorded on the iPad. It made it with the child's view, so that made it easier for me. So a lot of the things was my face, maybe on um, some of the videos, 
But then I did work with Sarah on, um, and she created some videos using the iPad so the students would have their view since I didn't have that capability. And with the slides, we had a generic um, master, and then we each made a copy to add if there's anything um, like wording or if we needed a class code or anything specific, and that's where we added our own videos. And I'll just speak to this. I had trouble making videos because of my internet. It just, I didn't have the bandwidth to constantly make videos like of myself. So I made a lot of audio files and put those into the slides and, and that seemed to work just as well. And sometimes the videos, like I would not necessarily make my math video for the next day until I saw what the kids did or how they did on an assignment the current day. So some of my videos were made like the night right before. Some of them you could pre-make ahead of time, just knowing expectations, but it really had to be tailored to our kids and how they were doing. And then here are all of our emails. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out. Um, we would love to just share more, answer any questions that you have. And if you have any questions right now, if you want to put them in the chat, or if you just want to unmute yourself and ask a question, you can do that as well. All right, it says, can you go back to how you handled feedback to the kids on the slides? Yes. So I'll show, for example, on here, like if the student had um, done everything perfectly, they didn't need to make any changes on this slide, we would, oh, sorry. So if like this slide was perfect, no changes were needed, we would, we have the um, Google Chrome extension for our Bitmoji. It doesn't work when we're on school Wi-Fi. <laughs> but we would um, drag it one that just said good job onto the slide and the students knew if you had that no changes were needed if they did need to make a change when you're on the slide that the change was needed if you click this little box we would just add a comment we also have moat um, which is something i downloaded from chrome and you could record yourself talking so the students depending just on their levels or what they were comfortable with. Um, I would either type a comment to them and then they had the chance that they could reply to the comment or click resolve. So if they resolved it, they're just telling you they think that they fixed it or they could type a question back to you. And every time they comment back, you'll get an email so you know they're on there working. Or if you use Moat, you can just record your voice saying whatever they need to look at or fix. And I kind of liked the moat just because I had a lot of below level readers. And I feel like with moat, I could kind of express more what I was trying to say instead of just trying to type it. It was because they could hear my voice. So moat was a great add on. And this was the first I had tried it, but I really liked it. And it also adds, uh, like it puts it in writing too, because some of my kids, said they didn't like listening to the <laughs> recording. They would rather just read it. I think they just processed it better. So it adds both, so they have the option. Any other questions, thoughts? Can I just ask a quick question about, back to the planning slides that you were just on? Did yeah. you have to, did you create copies for your students or did they make their own copies for those? Um, so we sent them in Google Classroom and just set it as make a copy for each student. Got it. Thank you. Uh huh. And once they had opened it in slides, they could go right to slides to open it. So if they were going back to make changes or didn't finish it all in one sitting, they could just go right to slides to reopen it or check the comments. And one of the things I know next year, if we do return, is teaching them how to open it with the correct app. So several of them were not opening it with the Slides app, so then they're editing it with the PDF tools, which becomes messy. So making sure that they're opening with the Docs app or with the Slides app, so that way they're actually typing in the text boxes is key. 
you can also set it for them to make their own cup like where they have to make the coffee but then they have to share it with you so that is just one extra step older kids might be that might be easier for them but for ours it would have just been lost any other questions And if you do have questions in the future or down the line, you can email any of us. Um, no question is a silly question because to be honest, we were figuring this out as we went or the first couple of weeks were overwhelming. And then as we got to the end, you just kind of get into a routine and it just becomes a little easier. So please let us know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on your first official PD day. And let us know if you need anything. And I'm going to mm -hmm. go ahead and stop the recording.